Welcome to Sackcrete Pro Tips, how to pour a concrete slab. Today we're mixing Sackcrete crack resistant fiber reinforced concrete mix. Sackcrete crack resistant is a 4,000 PSI mix specially formulated with virgin polypropylene fibers to reduce surface cracking as well as increasing abrasion resistance. After you pour your gravel base, if you still feel like you need to compact it, do so. Because the firmer you start off with the base, the less chance of cracking later. When pouring a heated space, it's important to put down a vapor barrier. Generally, that's a six mil poly. You need to check with local code requirements for exactly how thick your plastic needs to be. Once we have the poly in place, it's time to start mixing and pouring some concrete. After you started placing the concrete, the next step is called screeding. The action is to push it forward, making sure the forms are filled before I start trying to float it down. This way we're, we're ensuring even concrete placement. If you have a low area, simply come back and fill the spot, pick up the screed and continue on. After you screed a good sized section, it's good practice to go back and consolidate the edges. What this does is it gets rid of voids inside the concrete. For larger projects, consider renting a vibrator. As you place concrete, it's settling as it goes into the hardened state. So it's going to push out naturally the excess water it doesn't need. It's called bleed water. Now, in our case here, it's amplified because we've put polyplastic underneath the slab. So the slab water has nowhere else to go except out through the top. So in this scenario, you can use an old finisher's trick, take some garden hose, get a partner, lightly drag it, and you'll get a lot of excess water off. But once that excess water's been dragged off, you still have to let the concrete tighten. At this point, it's very important to point out that use only your hand floats. This is a magnesium hand float. For this part of the process, we're what's called floating. That's a leaving the pores open to let all the water come out. A big mistake is folks get on concrete too soon with a steel trowel. And once you steel trowel it, you close the pores and the water can be trapped inside the surface and later the top's going to pop off. This is a magnesium bull float. We obviously don't need it for this small of a slab. I'm just going to do a pass for, for demonstration purposes. This is the stage where you pretty much you just leave it alone until the bleed water dissipates and it's in the troweling phase. We're going to go ahead, because it's setting around the edges, I'm going to go ahead and catch it with the edger. An edger's purpose is to separate the concrete edge from the form. During the process of finishing, you're going to need to do it two, three times. But because of where we are in the setting, I need to do it now. So we're just going to do that process all the way around. So here's the thing, when concrete dries, it's going to crack. Your challenge is to plan out where you would like it to crack, and that's called a control joint. The two primary methods for making a control joint are like I did for this slab, it's called a hand groover. The other method is to rent a concrete saw. So now that we've got our joint run, we're going to let it set up a little bit further, and then we're going to begin the hand troweling phase. The concrete's almost finished, so before it gets too hard, I'm doing this first hard trial to close down the surfaces, but also work out any little imperfections in the slab before it gets too hard to smooth those over. And I'll come back and give it a second coat. So we've given this half of the slab a broom finish. 
It's a non-slip finish, typical of how you finish your driveway or sidewalk. On this half of the slab, I'm going to continue giving it a hard trowel finish to simulate what you would typically have for the garage or the basement floor. Now that our concrete slabs have hardened, let's review the finishes. We've got a broom finish here, and we've got a hard trowel finish here. You'll notice the hard trowel finish is darker in color than the broom, and that's totally natural for this type of a finish. After the concrete is finished, however, doesn't mean the job is complete. Have a plan in place for how you're going to cure your concrete to promote its ultimate strength and protect your hard work.